I'm not going to put our opening scenes on the video today because I just wanted to jump straight in and say I am absolutely blown away by the amount of support that you've given me over the last week. I just wanted to say an absolute thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It has been so encouraging, so kind. I've had so many kind words uh, commented on my videos and it's just been amazing. I, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for, for all of your support. And of course, this all wouldn't have been possible without the help of Overcharged Egg. Again, I'm absolutely blown away, absolutely over the moon, because for someone to recommend my video, of someone who I've kind of watched <laughs> since the start, who got me completely involved and utterly you know, head over heels for this game, um, is an absolute honour. So I just wanted to say thank you, thank you very much. So I am reading every single comment and responding to all of your comments as well. So thank you so much for dropping those in to me. That is absolutely amazing. I want to address some of them um, straight off the bat. Some changes that I've made in the city. Your input is brilliant. It's helping me learn. It's helping me develop. And I want to make this, you know, a community-based game. Um, sorry, a community-based uh, series. So yes, please keep please keep feeling free to drop you know names and suggestions. So let's get into some of them. What you've given me so far. Thanks for your comments. I'm, I'm really happy with those that you suggested. So, so hell yeah, I'm on board. Let's get these changed. So we're going to give this the new name of Overcharged Gardens. And uh, we'll also change this to the uh, Eggminton as well, which was suggested. We'll also update this for our little gardens over here. Also, I want to adjust the uh, the symmetry. I um, I too did find this a little bit off-putting without uh, having them centered. I have tried my best to uh, to get these in line. It was a bit of an awkward task, you know. And in vanilla, as you know, but I'm hoping I've uh, I've done you a bit more justice here. I've tried to line them up with the foyer of the uh, university. If we kind of back up into here, you can see. You know, they're fairly in line now, but I did move the road from the uh, underpass from over there to the middle. And uh, jumping over to the bakery, I again, I had so many problems trying to get this to line up, but I hope I've, again, helped out with uh, your expectations. I've moved it one tile over. The best I could do is get this kind of in line with this little plaza, and then the corner of the wall, we're in line with this, uh, with this line as well. So I'm hoping that uh, that's helped. Eagle-eyed viewers among you may have noticed that there is a slight change to our transportation system. I've been doing some work in the background which I've captured on a time lapse. I'm going to commentate over that which we'll get into in a moment. But we're kind of at a middle point where we're very close to 18,000 to unlock our square for our downtown. But before we get there, on today's episode I really want to dive into trams, trains and transportation. So let's go. Well, Lemonade here, just basically speaking to you now from pre, uh, basically done all the editing essentially, so I thought I'd do the voiceover and just give you a bit more of a, an idea of what's going on. Now, I want to just first of all say, um, I appreciate that you've probably put a bit of time in watching the train episodes at the beginning of Bookshaw, so I want to apologise that I'm actually redoing everything, but I'm hoping you all agree that things have been done for the better. Now since putting the train lines in, we started with Metro and this wouldn't have been the case. It would have been the steam locomotives and it just didn't sit right with me. And that was an in-game thing. We didn't have the trains unlocked, I believe it was a, a certain milestone. So we just, we had the Metro, so we thought we need to get trains in, we need to expand, let's go for it. So this has all been a little bit of a long time coming, if I'm being honest. I've just sort of regretted it a little bit. So hopefully, hopefully you'll agree that it'll now look a lot more better and make sense. So we've got a lot of soil availability here. I am basically making kind of like a mound uh, to house the train lines on. It just, I thought, you know, it probably would be pretty expensive putting a lot of that steel in to uh, support the track. So we, we made it with some soil. Now we'll come over to, across the road, which is nice and even actually. It, uh, it looks pretty good. My thought process is here to carry on the bridge because it looks like a viaduct. Now, if you've seen a picture of these throughout the world, we've got quite a few famous ones in here in uh, in England. Um, they basically, this is my vanilla interpretation. If we put our imagination hats on, that this is is a is a train viaduct. So I basically, you know, doing a bit more smoothing out and making the asset look a bit nicer. 
as it hits the ground. We've got all this soil availability, so we need to use it up. And in my opinion, that looks a lot, lot nicer. And I'm just sort of, you know, finishing, doing the finishing touches over here and trying to blend it in. Make it a little bit more pleasing on the eye underneath the bridge and just smoothing everything over. So I, I am actually pretty satisfied with how this turned out, if I'm being honest with you. Um, it was, I thought it was going to be a bit of a challenge, a bit more harder in vanilla than I thought it would be. So it, it wasn't too bad, so I'm pretty grateful for that. Now, I noticed that we needed to hook into uh, Victoria as well, so I've just done a little spur to you know continue that line. I'm actually looking where I need to line it up, actually. So again, we're going to carry on with the theme of another viaduct. So once we all hooked in, I kind of curve it back off towards uh, the city of Victoria. We've got, I'm using these guidelines just to bring it in parallel to the existing train line here. And I think it looks, it looks all right. It's no, no, not too lumpy and bumpy. We did need to bring it back down to the ground though. It was a bit of a steep elevation from where it was and where those existing lines were. So we just done a bit more smoothing just to try and get it down the best we can really. There is something quite satisfying with Earthworks in Vanilla Low. It is hard work because it's not as easy as using Move It, even though Move It you can get some incredible results. But there is something nice about just achieving something that, that, that is in Vanilla that's not, you know, that doesn't look too much of an eyesore. Because <laughs> it, it, let's be honest, it sometimes can. So again, I'm just tidying up, getting rid of this old Metro line. I did decide to destroy this old, uh, old station and redo this development i as i say i'm sorry if you have recently watched this episode and you like the layout but i've tried to keep it very very similar um, between episodes i will put a little bit more detail in down as well so we get it basically how we had it before but as i say i think you will agree that it's gonna be it looks similar and it's a bit of an upgrade so i'm just leveling off everything here just to do the final connection back into the main line so we've got lots of connectivity but I'm pretty pleased how it's turned out. As I say, just dropping the pathways back in, putting the house back in, and um, we're all pretty much done here. So I will jump back into the video and we'll carry on the rest of the episode. In order to get trams over to Coleridge, we need to do some serious modification. So we're probably at the stage where we'll be seeing electrified trams now. Well, maybe we're probably even past that point. So it's time that we included them in the series. And I don't think you can beat a good old tram going around the network. It's just something about it that's very, you know, it's pleasing to have it in your city. And the Sims are going to love it too. So I've identified this section here, which is going to house our tram depot department and some kind of... Uh, a bit of like a train, uh, a tram service station, which we're going to incorporate into our network. It's going to go ahead, hug the edges of the, the sort of like the suburb part through our high street, cross over to this bridge. And I'm sad to say, I am unhappy about this, but this bridge has got to go, unfortunately. We've got to upgrade it because we need to get our trams on there. But I'll tell you what, we'll keep this one as if it's like a listed bridge. We won't take this because, I, you know, as I mentioned at the start when we've done this, this is a beautiful bridge, so we're going to keep it. I'm going to take out this road here. It doesn't really serve a purpose. And I thought, you know, we need the extra space. So let's clear that out. We're going to take a few, make a few little adjustments to what we've got. And uh, we're going to we're going to sort of a home our depot in here. So let's go. I'm going to upgrade straight off the bat our tram network system. Okay, so our tram lines are in place, our roads are updated, the infrastructure is good to go. Now, I'm just gonna quickly breeze through what I've decided to do here. So I looked up the busiest of roads, and of course this was a no-brainer. We had to get our tram line down here to hook up into our station and uh, you know the main residential area. I've used this bridge as discussed at the start. We're gonna go you know backwards and forwards on this bridge to get into the, you know, the smaller part of Coleridge to the main part, as I didn't wanna disrupt this. We're going to then come down the second busiest road, which you know is going to hook onto this main uh, arterial, and it's going to serve our residential purpose to get people to their jobs and, uh, of course, over to the station. 
Now on this side, I didn't go too far to the edge of town. I decided to sort of cut through this one. I didn't want to upset, even though it's a busier road, I didn't want to upset what we've got placed down here. I'm, I'm kind of set in stone with that. I like that, that avenue. So I've decided to go around the outskirts, taking in the, you know, into account the park, the smaller facilities area, and again, just to collect the, uh, the, you know, the population from the residential area. So that is my thinking. I'm gonna place the tram depot in this new reused space. So let's try and go up as close as possible to the station here. And I'm just gonna create kind of like a box like so. We'll upgrade it with tram roads, of course. Now, let's get this uh, asset down. I just want to you know, quickly breeze over this because I am a big fan of this. It feels very not Victorian maybe, but it feels very early 20th century to me and it fits it perfect in this era. So let's get that down. Let's hook in a nice little service station for our trams. Not gonna be used of course, but it's all about extending the asset out in vanilla. And there has been many of other YouTubers that have done this idea, so I thought, you know, let's, let's get on board too because it does, it just makes it feel a lot more special. So we're gonna go from this node into here. So trams can come in and out. We can actually then get this back to a normal uh, pedestrian road. And we're just gonna hook in, which will give us a chance to put our services here. That one's a little bit close. Unfortunately, it's just the way, the way it's turned out. But we'll just put some, we'll put some concrete in the middle just to fill this specific areas in. And I'm happy with that. It adds a few more lights and it just feels a little bit more a little bit more industrial than just having the grass. So we are breezing pretty quick. I'm going to press play again. We've got our uh, we've got our tram depot down. Let's uh, let's think about this area here. So we we need a bit more residential, and even though it's going to be super close to the tram station itself, I don't think I really don't think people are going to mind. I think it would be you know it's a popular area. It's so close to the connection. So we're going to kind of we're going to overlook the fact of how close the noise pollution will be for our for our sims so let's get a nice little fence no we'll go from we'll go from here because i can put a little pathway in that square tiles here so we'll run a nice oil no not that one we're going to run down our oil industry fence prefer that one much better for the railings we're going to get that in place we will do the same on this side here and we'll get another little kiosk which we use for our security box. I've just gone on to find it, but you, I believe you can actually get this asset from the prop section. So as usual, we're just reusing, you know, familiar assets that we've got access to. So we'll pop them down there. And I guess we wouldn't go miss having one right on the edge here. So connecting up to our existing pathways as well, we're gonna use this as a little guideline and I think we might just hook let's hook in there so sims can you know still get about and what I'm thinking is we'll have some uh, we'll have some residential three by threes I think three deep so I'm going to use the uh, the European assets so let's just sort of pinch over our area this is an old historical building but I think we're going to take it out and upgrade it for the high density We'll, re we'll, keep, we'll remain it as a commercial lot on this corner, but I think that'll be fine as is. And then I'm just gonna plop down residential, three rows deep. We're gonna wait for this to grow in. Once that grows in, I can then place the ones behind it. Again, I'll have another little, perhaps a, uh, a bank on the corner or something of that nature. So I'm also just dropping our pipe network in, keeping that updated. So homes are growing in pretty quick. We've got a steep decline into the low residential, which I'm, I'm happy with. Um, I think we need the population and we, you know, we're literally almost there. So hold on to your seats because next one uh, is gonna be a good one. We're gonna be starting our, uh, our downtown in this tile, in this tile over here. All right, so we've got our depot down. Let's, you know, let's off, straight off the bat, let's put some details down. Let's get some nice trees in and it'll give a little bit of noise protection as well. We'll go for our, well, maybe not noise protection, but it'll make it feel a little bit more that it's planned. So 
and there we go big city i'm not going to breeze over i'm not going to go into this today i'm just going to kind of breeze over it but we will revisit that next episode because this is very important that we get a transportation down just for growth so we've got a line of trees there i might put another line down here further on the time lapse just updating our fence too let's get this secure because so we don't want kind of access into these areas so it's going to be pretty dangerous with all these uh, trams in here so that's kind of you know somewhat uh, you know closed off let's get our trams in action and decide where we're going to go so i'm thinking of doing you know like a clockwise anti-clockwise route and just going to sort of locate the best places for it i'm not really going to kind of bother with how many junctions we've got at the moment i think it's just sort of going to slam this down and kind of feel our way through so i'm going to put one there we'll have one outside here so they can take advantage of the services and the school we'll have a pickup point for our sims in this location i think we'll have one outside here too and then we are back across the bridge i think instead of going down high street with this one we will go along the outskirts so we'll have another spot stop here just by the worker barracks You'd imagine that they'd want to get, you know, to and from, um, from place to work to home. Um, we will have one. We'll have one on this corner, so they can kind of, you know, cross over, and head down into the secondary high street. One outside the park, and one, yeah, one in here. Now, this to me just feels. So I know it's not the greatest of you, but it feels like it could be anywhere. It feels like an old-fashioned like a corner of London or New York or Paris. It really feels that, I mean, it could be anywhere, any any sort of built up uh, city, but it just feels, to me, I don't know, it just feels like, do you guys think this feels like a, maybe like a shopping district or something like that? It just screams those vibes to me. Anyway, um, let's get back onto the main high street. And of course we must have one outside our train station. And I think, we will then hook straight back in here, complete the line, so the tram depot doesn't throw 10,000 trams onto the line. Let's have a quick overview. We'll update this to, let's go for a bit of the, the modern looking one. And I'll go for a deep purple. And how many trams we've got on it? Eight. I'm gonna reduce that down to, let's say five. Let's start off with five. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but I'm just gonna change the intensity of the color down to more of like, you know, a lighter purple. So we can get representation of the of the other direction of the tram. I'll be right back with you. Okay, I've slammed down the the new tram lines all around Coleridge, and here they come. So I've gone for this sort of like this style of the tram. In the, we're going to do another city. We're going to do Victoria. We're going to do their tram line next. But I thought we'd just get a glimpse, just to see them go on their way. So some are making it down that way. Some are going the anti-clockwise way. So that is good. I'm happy. We're going to utilize this and we'll see we'll see how the you know sims are utilizing it as we check back in at the end of the episode. I have just noticed that I've not actually taken some of the trams off the line for this one. So let's see only we've got eight. Gonna drop that to five. we will be on our way to the other town. Okay, so we've made our way back over to Victoria. We need to put another tram depot in. I'm thinking I'm gonna remove some of these buildings i'm going to repurpose this land we can just pretend that these got you know perhaps bought out by the tram company to rehouse where they're going to you know set up camp so i'm going to repurpose that it's never really done well that building so i've got no i've got no guilt removing i'm also going to call a little mulligan to our road network i don't know how hyper realistic that will be so please do forgive me if you feel that's a little bit unnecessary but i want a bit of a clean slate I've made a few errors over here, and I think they would have probably, you know, they'd have probably invested in it. So let's move the, our station over. And the reason I'm doing this is, if we look at our our actual terrain, it's not the nicest. And if trams pulling up terrain like like this isn't going to end well. So let's get our let's get leveled off, and let's get that place down. So I haven't really pinched more than I need to for the land over here, but I think it's going to make it's going to make a ton more sense flatten it out so let's get that place down we'll put back into our existing uh, industry roads keep the traffic flying through here and this and this uh, factory happy um, we're going to place this towards the end I don't want to go too close to the coast or the uh, river 
I think we're gonna come off this junction. That'll that'll create a nice that'll create a nice entrance in. Now I don't know how these houses are gonna feel. If you know you've got a new tram depot built at the bottom of your garden, but unfortunately things are moving on and we need the space. So if we do get a little bit of uh disruption, I'm sure we can we can sort something out. So let's upgrade this road again. So let's talk about infrastructure. We're going to follow out. What, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to keep the tram line in this portion of the town of Victoria. And we're going to actually come along this main road into Oak Hill and just serve the little town centre here as a little sort of turnaround. We're not going over the bridge. This can be done at a separate stage. Once we unlock this tile, I think it will be create more sense that we can go over to the east side of the town. So let's get out again, let's get our tram lines down. I'll slam these down and put it in a time lapse and then we can discuss where we're gonna put the uh, stops. So let's get placing our tram stops at the most important points. So we'd have one outside the cemetery we're going to have a little stop over as a turnaround in our old medieval town of Oak Hill, or the supposed medieval town. Um, we will, okay, I've just upgraded the road there. We just missed a little bit off, so of the tram lines, couldn't get down here, but I've done that now. So we'll have one outside the school. That's obviously an important part. We will have one at the, be yeah, let's have one in the middle of a high street. And I think it will make sense to have one outside our little market pavilion. Well, then we'll head into the residential zone. One outside the park. And again, it will be pretty much down to hooking into our transportation system. So we'll have one at our new station. One outside the new town hall. Or one outside the town hall. And then I think we'll just... We'll just complete the line. I think that will be. I think that'll be more than adequate. So we're gonna again. We'll uh, we'll upgrade our tram. I think we'll go for the other tram. I'm gonna pause that before they send them out. So we're gonna go for. Let's go for this tram. So make it a little bit different to Colridge. And we'll go for a nice crimson red. And again, I think we'll we'll just nudge this down a tad. So maybe around five. That'll do. I will do the exact same again as I did a minute ago on the opposite side then we can detail our tram station and here they go so we've got a nice bright crimson red line and we've got a nice salmon pink line going around so I think it's gonna feel you know it's gonna feel nice and authentic now it's gonna it's sort of gonna have a little bit more character to uh, this town and um, I'm hope I'm hoping you think I've got these in the right spots I think they're gonna you know more than they're more than adequate the spaced out pretty good oh this has got to go anyway I'm getting off the beaten track here so anyway I'm gonna uh, let's have a look back over to our bridge so if I'm a little bit all over the shot backwards and forwards but that just caught my eye couldn't have that sort of being left so I'm gonna smooth that out a little bit we'll upgrade this to get rid of that symbol now these people over here are not at all happy so we are probably lacking in services we'll, we'll put down a fire station we'll just plop that down again and hopefully they can forgive me for the disruption and uh, we'll carry on what I think I might do is I do feel bad for these homes I think I will put a little bit of landscaping we'll jazz it up a little bit maybe maybe some Mm, just thinking because it's got a little bit it is a little bit pollutive so maybe we will just uh, maybe we'll just have to overlook things let's put a road down the back here maybe just some commercial just to hide that a little bit on the corner perhaps some sort of like warehouses or you know wholesalers grocery shops things like that so we are pretty much back up and running now I'm, there's one more part of the video that I want to do and I'm hope I'm not rushing through things so I hope that's not coming across that way but I've just got so many ideas that I really want to get placed and this is extending a little rural train station to a town of Thornton a little village over here 
So as you saw on the time lapse, we've got a nice embankment here. I'm going to do something I don't usually do. I'm going to take I'm going to take the mic a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to just drag out our, our land a little bit. I'm going to you know I'm going to sort of take it back. This will all make sense in a moment. But what I like doing, as I mentioned it before, part of the reason I've done this is to, well chose the 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 capital city over here is because I like working with terrains in cities. I think it adds character, as I mentioned, and it just adds a little bit more. Adds a bit more of a challenge, a bit more of you know thought process of why we're doing certain things. We'll cut back on this. We probably won't need it to be that high. But what I'm doing is I'm going to go with our dirt roads. I'm going to measure out where our train station is going to be. So we'll come down here about. I believe it's about seven. So that was the five mark. And that's seven. We'll cut that away. And then we're going to pop in our nice little village train line, train station. We'll go for about there. That way it gives it ample room to swing in and out. We'll go 960 there too. So we've just got you know, a new a new access point for this train station. So that can, we can always add this into the line. So it picks up passengers all the way into you know overcharged gardens here and down into the new, well, eventually, the coastal town. We've got that in. Now we need to get up, up here. And I don't want to tee off and disturb these homes here too much. I think it makes sense to come off as a, with a new, kind of like a new main road. So we'll come out there. We'll have a bit of a sweeping curve, I think. We could always, you know, hook into here as well. It'll create more of like a, perhaps a new estate, especially in this area. And we're gonna just gently wind our way up to the new terrain surface up here. So we'll get the slope, we'll get the sloping tool, right click up here got a decent grade size brush so let's let's just uh smooth and feather the edge well we'll feather the edges off around here as we go but that'll give us our switch back and it'll make it just a bit more of a nicer approach to curve yeah i can get on board with that i think that's more than adequate i think that's okay and then we're gonna just hook inside with this one i won't drag you through the monotonous procedure of getting this down to the ground so i'll be back with you in a moment that one went a little bit more smoother. I like that. So, you, you know, it's going to be quite a nice view up here, actually. Well, to be honest, we're probably going to have some low-rise commercial along, flanking the station. Um, but from the sides, quite a, quite, a, quite the view. I thought we'd go with the tree-lined roads, just to make it a little bit more fancier. We can, of course, upgrade this. These trees, just for me, look really modern i don't know but it's it's okay they look they're nice trees the young linden trees are great so we'll go with them uh we've got the larger sidewalks along the side it gives that transition to move over and of course we'll get some of our user friendly pathways and you know shortcuts going through i'm gonna think i think i'm gonna go back just for this bit i'm just gonna go back to our you know plopping down these houses just so they match so we can perhaps think you know maybe they were done similar sort of time what I'm trying to say is this would probably should have been here a lot earlier than what it was. So we will, you know, we'll uh, we'll, we'll cheat a little bit and uh, we'll, uh, you know, just plop these down. So I'm only I'm only going where it's going to snap to. So it still feels, you know, completely vanilla. So I'm just sort of just going round until the actual house snaps to the grid. Yep, I know they're screaming for water. We will get there. Um, I'm happy with that. And then these other little tiles, we'll, as I mentioned, we'll just zone these in. I'll keep an eye on what pops up. As I said, I don't want it to be too tall along here. And I'm going to lay our water pipes down. Let's see what we get. We really, really want to keep this level, you know, one le one level building. This, what is this? This doesn't look like a restaurant. Shrimpy, subs and salads. I don't know, it looks more like a house. I don't know, maybe it doesn't. Yeah, you know, shrimpies can stay. No, too high. It's too high. I'm gonna be a bit. I'm gonna be a bit strict on what we have. That again, too high. That's perfect. I'll let these grow in, and uh, I'll historicalize them as we go. So, this feels very nice. I like this. Don't like that though. <laughs> Being ruthless today. So I have spent far too much time on this path than I really needed to. But I think that's the best I get just shows the importance of 
you know, terraforming before you build. But that is okay. I'm going to upgrade the rest of them so they match. So we've got some uh, concrete pathways. And I think it'll also be important to get one more in here, just off of the actual high street. So we'll make this a little bit more of a straightforward route. Okay, that's good. And then finally, we'll get some zoning in. We won't go too mad with the zoning. Probably, yeah, too deep is more than enough. I'll leave that blank. We're only getting, seems to be getting either shrimpy salad bar or the ice cream shops going in at the moment. So I've just took them out. I'm just going to drop some, you know, landscaping just to hide this edge of the cliff slightly. Just get rid of the texture a little bit. This is more of an over, over, you know, overgrown area. We'll place some of our beautiful oak trees in. I won't put them on the uh, two elevated areas. We'll just say this, sort of, you know, this part of town developed around this grounds that were here before. I'm just trying to flesh it out a little bit. We're actually seeing so much activity here already. It's great. I'm really happy about that. It means it's done its job perfectly. So. Let's carry on detailing. Just putting some shrubs here and there, just you know, bring a pop of colour. These people are proud of this new station. They like this area. Just make it pop a little bit more. That's nice. That's great. Okay, so we've got a little bit of detailing around here. We've got our pathways in that are being used, which is good news. We've got some more homes added. What population are we up to now? Twenty thousand. So we've actually grown quite a bit. So that's very good news. Place a little bit more zoning on that corner and that will just fill that in. But this sort of feels very, very nicely integrated now. Sort of like this, you know, you'd think they'd have been here the same sort of time. I'll fill this in at some sort, you know, a little stage when we need a bit more residential. But I am pretty pleased how we've turned out here. So before I hop over to the other towns, I'm just going to drag this line in so we get a nice new stop. So that will go down you know into our new into uh, overcharged gardens right the way now as a pickup point into Coleridge and that will should help with transportation and save some journey times our traffic isn't actually too bad since we're still not you know we're not at the motor well the automobile era just yet very very close around the corner well that will be you know factored in next episode but we're, we're holding up on the traffic flow which I'm pleased to announce so let's have a look what we've done. How are we getting on with our lines over in our cities? Do a bit of a line overview. We are getting some good traffic flow. Let's check that we've got enough on here. We've got plenty of space by the looks of things. Yeah, we've got plenty of space. I think I might even just sort of take one off just to save a little bit on the budget. I'm probably just sort of being a bit over the top there, but I want to build the balance up. We need to reach the millionaires club, so this one seems to be a little bit more popular. Wow, look at that five. Yeah, that's where you would expect it to be. Look at that. There is some good utilization of our lines here, which means it's justified, which so I'm happy about that. But we've got plenty of room on here, actually. No trains are too full. We probably could put three more on, maybe just to clear this out, because that's just getting, you know, ever higher. Yeah, again, I'm just going to reduce that just by one. Just by one. Again, we can always adjust it. Okay, peeps, I'm going to wrap the episode up here. I hope you've enjoyed it today. Just a bit of a quick outro. Um, I hope you're kind of getting the personality coming through now of Brookshaw. What I want to develop, this historical timeline. We are we're moving away from our so-called industrial revolution, the Victorian era. We've still got that those views and characteristics all over dotted all over the city. This is why I specifically chose this shot. We're going to be moving on into the 20th century, which is already covered. We're going to got lots of exciting things come up. We've got the downtown, if you want to call it downtown or the capital. Next episode, we're going to start laying that out. So hit the notification bell because that's going to be a good one. I'm going to drop that as soon as I can. I also just wanted to touch on again, just and say thank you so much for your support. I hope you've enjoyed the journey so far. And today's, I've tried to show as many little different places and projects that we've covered so far. It might be a longer episode, I'm not too sure yet, but um, I'll leave it here. I'll leave you with some cinematics, I'm going on and on. So I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, see you later.